I will be talking today, and I'm not going to share a personal story, of course, but I'll be talking on behalf of a group of people, professionals, who come from uh, organizations, civil society, that have been working to save the nature and also the health of uh, citizens. The energy sector in Kosovo still remains a huge problematic sector with lots of money invested, but still no uh, results have been shown. After billions of euros invested in the energy sector, the situation remains still unclear and uh, we don't know which way we're going. The money that has been put into this sector, unfortunately, went towards keeping a dinosaur alive, a dinosaur who was polluting the environment, a dinosaur who was killing people, a dinosaur who was poison poisoning us every day. Unfortunately, the technology that has been used comes from a country that does not exist anymore, the Soviet Union. So imagine what we're breathing every day. I will uh, uh, start with... Uh, the story of the consortium, the energy sector being the most problematic sector in Kosovo, uh, triggered these young people from civil societies, from think tanks, from media organizations and grassroots to come together and try to give solutions on the way forward, trying to keep Kosovo on its sustainable pathway tracks so we go with the latest devel developments. I will use a personal story on this, uh, on this uh, story as well. When you were asked to draw a factory in your art class uh, before, and if you forgot to put the smoke on top of the chimney, guess what the teacher would tell you? You're you're, you think our factories are not working? This is not the economy that you're describing. So you would most likely fail the class with, because you forgot to put the smoke on top of the class. Unfortunately, we're still struggling to educate our people on sustainable development. What it means when we develop something without compromising the land and the health of people. As I approach the city, going to work every day, I see the chimneys of the power plants smoking and polluting the air. I tell myself, this is the air I'm breathing every day. This has to stop. We have to do something. This is what you don't usually see in the Western European countries anymore. They have went to more advanced ways of producing electricity with more sustainable ways, which is renewable, uh, renewable sources. This is a picture that I will show you the difference of what you see from the air when, as, you, as you're approaching to land in Kosovo versus uh, another picture which is also taken in Kosovo showing a sustainable uh, energy production in in Kosovo. I wonder then, uh, the figures that, the statistics that the World Bank is showing us every day, and I'll, I'm showing here a picture here with uh, 2010 numbers, what has happened to Kosovo only in that year. We see that 835 premature deaths happened in Kosovo due to air pollution that was caused by mainly power plants. More than 100 million euros have been spent from our citizens seeking medical assistance outside of Kosovo. We have had 310 cases of chronic bronchitis and 22,900 new cases of respiratory diseases in children. This is huge. This is something very disturbing. One thing we also know is uh, us in Kosovo People here have a short life uh, of five years. We live five years less than people in the region and in the Western world. Now, it is true that we have lots of lignite reserves. Uh, the reserves that we often say we sleep on top of lignite and we have to do something. But it is also true that I have never heard anyone speaking with uh, or coming with a, an, a creative idea on how to use lignite besides burning it. And we know how dangerous it is to burn and what we get out of it. One might even argue that because of these huge lignite reserves, we can produce lots of electricity and sell it to our neighboring countries and we don't have to work anymore. We're all set. We could be a net exporter of energy and Kosovo will be well off. 
But this is not the case because we have never been able to calculate the external cost of coal to the environment and to the health of population with the numbers that I've just shown you. Uh, we have also uh, been hearing that uh, what are the, the, the problems in the energy sector that must be addressed first. And I'll, I'll just mention to you a, a, a few of them. We have a, a power plant which is polluting and needs to go. We have another power plant which is also polluting and needs to be retrofitted. But most important thing is that we are uh, having almost 50% of total energy production is going waste because of uh, technical problems, because of commercial problems, and also because of uh, not enough energy efficiency measures in place, which will help people to uh, conserve and to save electricity. So the question would be, uh, or the result will be, not to use electricity more, but how to save more. I have gone through some ideas here and, and um, trying to understand myself and, and also the government of Kosovo. A what-if question for the government of Kosovo could be a $1 million answer for them. What if we do not have enough lignite reserves to produce electricity? What would have been doing? What would be a solution to that? And I will, I will mention you a, a, a saying of uh, uh, Thomas Friedman who said, the ideal country in a flat world is a country with no natural resources. Because if you have no natural resources, then you tend to dig into yourself, to be more creative, to tap into the energy resources, be uh, entrepreneurship, and uh, intelligence of the, your own people, man and woman, try to come up with uh, a solution. Even more, uh, there's a, a saying who says, uh, when you don't have enough resources, you become resourceful. And that's what we're trying to get from our government, trying to leave the fossil fuels underground to see if we have enough creativity to be resourceful enough to find solutions for our ways forward, which will be in line with uh, sustainable development pathways or where the whole world is trying to go. What are the benefits of the alternative scenarios? I mean, by um, um, uh, bringing more renewable energy into the uh, uh, mix, we could be independent from the grid. We would not pollute as we're polluting right now. We would emit CO2 emissions. We would even pay less because we would use less with all these measures that I've mentioned to you. All in, at the end, the, to conclude this presentation, Kosovo is a place which could show to the world that we could do more by employing these measures and new ideas of production of the electricity. The lack of studies by the government or the whole focus to create electricity by burning fossil fuels is a mentality of the past. We are not in line with new developments and we're not in line with uh, the world's uh, focus. We have been able to give solutions to all these problems that I'm mentioning. We have come up with studies who show that alternatives exist. We have come up with studies who show that one could save up to 30% of electricity, which could be translated into 30% less payment at the end of the day by only employing an, uh, energy efficiency measures who would uh, mean to insulate houses, changing doors and windows. In other words, to uh, conserve electricity from uh, the way we use it. Uh, sometimes it's even hard to understand how the academia is working in this field. I mean, we have professors uh, from, the, uh, from the field who don't believe on this pathway and who try to push uh, these policy solutions towards, uh, towards the uh, burn of lignite, but we're trying to tell them that this is not, not the way. So, um, again, the Kosovo has a great chance to become one of the largest uh, favorable places in the region for renewable energy. One, Kosovo could change the image of a one of the most polluted countries in the Southeast Europe. 
which could give the way to greener and uh, more sustainable electricity, which could open green jobs to the economies who would work in the green uh, uh, economy, the uh, renewable en uh, energy, and who could uh, save ourselves from locking us down for more years to breathe the uh, bad air, to get sick from this pollution, and to lock ourselves down with another power plant in the future. Thank you very much, and I hope to you've enjoyed this speech.